Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba, thank you for joining me. This is Arumba's Adjustments for Hearts of Iron 4. If you're not familiar with this series format, what this is, is interface improvements and various quality of life type things that I have just jotted down as I've been playing. Um, things that I think could make the game more enjoyable for the player. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can see some of this stuff get implemented into the game, just so that the game has uh, more, more user approachability. So, without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look at some adjustments. Adjustment number one. So, I feel like this list, the Recruit and Deploy screen, is a bit unwieldy in that there is no way, there's no way for us to collapse down these individual division um, templates that you're training. I feel like you should be able to click like either on the icon or there should be like a button somewhere on here to to just minimize the group, right? Um, because it, I mean, look at how long this list can get. And depending on the order that you click them, like if maybe all your infantry at the top and then you've got a couple of motorized, then you've got some tanks or, or whatever it may be, it can be difficult to find what you're looking for. It's just a little bit too cumbersome, I think, not being able to collapse them down. Also, I personally would really like it if you could reorganize this list um, um, at will, meaning uh, click on the tank, hold, drag, and then it would move it up in the list. This wouldn't necessarily, I think, have anything to do with the uh, order of reinforcement priority, because that's already taken care of with this stuff. But just for the sake of organization, being able to put them where you want them, I think would be quite handy. Adjustment number two is actually kind of somewhat similar to the first one as well. It's also related to this. One thing is that um, this this is never really very well explained, I thought, but um, um, maybe some people will learn about this now. Um, but it's actually a complaint related to whether when you have uh, a different theater selected. So let's say I have the African theater selected, and then I want to take my new infantry with no location set, and I want to deploy them to, say, here. So I've told them to go there. Now I want to assign them to automatically join this homeland grouping. I do that, I, I can't. If I click on that, it takes me to that division. In order to actually be able to select that division as the, the one that it goes to, you have to already be in the theater that's selected, click on the little button there, and then click down here. And intuitively, I feel like, regardless of this, whether I'm in the Asian or the African theater, I should be able to click and then right-click here to say, these divisions get added to this. Um, but you can't do that. You have to go homeland, you gotta go homeland, click, and then click down here, and now they are appropriately assigned to join that, that grouping. So, um, again, it's a minor interface improvement, but I feel like it could go a long way towards making the game more approachable and better. Adjustment number three, is related to um, generals and their position at the bottom of the screen. Also kind of a, just a minor thing here. I don't like how you have to click settings in order to adjust this, the name of this. I feel like you should just be like, like double click right there and, and automatically enter into the, um, the rename field. But anyway, let's just say that I have a uh, boot camp. Um, I do this quite often. I'll have a boot camp theater and the boot camp is where I send my units to train, right? So I'll take, I'll take a troop. Right, and uh, let's just say that I've got multiple divisions, right? So we split in half, we've got multiple divisions. Let's say we appoint some leaders. Now here's the, the complaint, or here's the rub. There's no way to reorganize these generals. Period. The only way you can do it is by deleting everything and then starting over from scratch and doing it in the order that you want it. So for example, if on the far left you want to have your infantry and then on the far right you want to have your panzers, then you've got to build it out in that way. You can't just click on this general and then drag him and then move him around and, and just change the order. I'm not talking about moving this interface, like putting the general interface over here or moving it over here. I'm talking about just which generals first in the list of generals. Um, you can't move them, which is irritating. Um, where I found it to be uh, frustrating was actually before I really fully understood theaters, 
I would always want to have my boot camp theater be on the very, very far left. And so I would have to create the boot camp army first so that it would be on the very, very, very far left. Um, and anyway, it, it just seems like a minor thing. I, I think you should be able to move these guys around. I don't understand why, why, why that you can't. Adjustment number four um, is related to error, and let's just say like you're you know you're a normal player and, and you do what the normal player does, which is to immediately take all of your fighters that are, are out there in the field and um, send them back into reserves. First off, this process is very tedious. There needs to be an easier way to do this um, because the way that the game originally deploys your airfields is uh, is not good. Um, you want to know exactly what you have and you want to be able to deploy them with it where, where you want them So let's say that we want to create a new air wing, right? We want to take all of our um, All of our interwar fighters and we want to deploy them. They're deploying from wherever to here now The complaint is that you can't assign them commands until it has been deployed and arrived at its location That is stupid. Um, that's like saying all right, boys, we're rolling out. You're flying off to Paris. Okay, sir, what do we do when we get there? Wait until you receive further orders. Excuse me? You mean you can't tell me, like, hey, once you arrive in Paris, your mission is to, oh, I don't know, do air superiority in northern France? I cannot click on this and drag it. I can't tell them to go to northern France and be on air superiority. That is idiotic. I should be able to tell them, hey, your job is... This is your base, this is your mission, go. The orders should be, you should be allowed to combine them. Um, the fact that you can't do that is, is just, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense at all. So that, that should be changed. And then also, again, there needs to be a way, I think in this screen, there should just be a button or something that just says like, send all airplanes to reserves. Or like, select, select a, a certain number of airplanes and then say, send to reserves because I I don't like having to manually go through and, and it gets worse if, like if you're playing this is the early game France it's 1938 if you have like tons of active air, air divisions and you want to reorganize your, your air force it can get very tedious you'll have like 50 pop-up windows where you've got to go through and manually disband every single one just so that you can create solid 1000 stacks um, that fit into your large airplane um, air, airfields so that, that should get, that's an adjustment that I'd like to see. Adjustment number five. So at some point you're going to be in a position where you are conquering the world and you have issues with resistance. People are upset about what you have done to them, which is just silly. They shouldn't be upset. So you may create a, a thing. I've got a theater here I've called resistance. Resistance is futile. Um, it's composed of cavalry divisions with suppression. I've also got field hospitals on them just because I was having manpower issues at one point and uh, not that they were ever taking any combat. But one thing you'll notice that's really tedious about this is that if you press F6 to see the resistance map mode and then you have this guy selected, it goes back to the regular command. You, you cannot keep the suppression map mode open while you have the army selected. So for example, if I have issues with suppression, let's say I've conquered some new territory um, over here, and I want to increase the range of um, this thing over here and say, okay, I want you guys to help out and I'm going to garrison you here. I think, I think that this one had issues, right? I don't know. Let me press F6 again to check. Yep, okay, it did. This one does, this one does, okay. Click on the army, press the V key, click, click. Why can't I just press F6, keep this thing open, and then stay on the suppression map mode while I have the army selected and then be able to assign like, this, this back and forth tedium gets so obnoxious. Um, you should be allowed to, st and then this happens too. When you click on this, sometimes what it'll do, I'm looking over here in India, when you click on it, it will center elsewhere. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to stay where I'm looking. But that is, that is an adjustment that I would make. Like, allow us to keep the suppression map field open. And then this also goes hand in hand. If I have any map mode open whatsoever, if I'm issuing any commands whatsoever, take a hint from EU4, I never want to click on this airbase. Ever. This should not be an interactable object while you have specific map modes open. Same thing with naval bases, 
same thing with armies, same thing with whatever. When I'm issuing commands, that needs to be, it needs to, to, to disable everything else. Um, this was an issue that happened in EU4 where you would constantly be clicking on the stupid little trade center of trade icons. Um, or when you were trying to do peace deals and you were trying to select provinces, it would click on armies, that kind of thing. That shouldn't happen. And it's a quality of life thing that should have carried over from EU4, in my opinion. Now, an additional thing that I think would be nice, and this may be asking for too much, I know that Paradox doesn't want it to automate everything, but something to consider is that we've got all these different types of battle plans that are available. We've got air scenario, fallback lines, we've got front lines and stuff like that. I would love to just have a button for suppression. And what it would do is you would, you would take your army, you would assign them to the suppression command, and then what it would do is it would automatically have them go around to locations that are high in resistance and suppress them. Is that too much automation? Maybe. Um, is the suppression management game, mini game, fun? No, definitely not. So would automating it make the game better? I think yes. That's my opinion, but I'll leave it up to the developers to decide. So that would be uh, the next adjustment. Adjustment number six. All right, so we're looking at this attack screen, right? Now, there's a lot of information on here, and the longer you look at it, the less it makes it, the less sense it makes. No, that's not true. Um, it, 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 it's... There's... It, okay. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> but, this is my adjustment, what I would like to see. The most important information to me... First off, I would make this interface bigger. Make it, stretch it out, you know, about an extra 100 pixels on the left, 100 pixels on the right. Um, so that we have room for more of these modifiers and stuff. But I've talked about in many, many, many of my adjustment videos the concept of a good tooltip and a bad tooltip. A good tooltip shows you how you got there. A bad tooltip obfuscates information that you want to see all the time. These are examples of bad tooltips. The information that I want to see all the time is this modified to 56.8%. I want to know, how is this division doing in combat right now? And what I constantly find myself doing is hovering over this thing to see 56%, 76%. Like, I'm trying to see, like, okay, how are we doing? Are we, are, is, is my number 56 better than their number, 124? No, it's not, it's bad. Okay, so things are going bad. That is the number that should be visible all the time. It should show, like, move this chunk the left like a little bit and again if we had a bigger interface there'd be plenty of room for it there should be something showing the total um modifiers like modifier currently modify total modifiers for every division on both sides so that i could see 56 versus 124 50 50 versus 40 whatever that is what is relevant and then i should be able to hover over that number to see how we got there that's what's important. Don't obfuscate the information that you want to see all the time behind a tooltip. Um, again, this is my opinion, but hey, it's my adjustment video, so I'm allowed to give my opinion. So that would be an adjustment that I would love to see, because I hate having to hover over all these tooltips just to see information that I want to see all the time. Adjustment number seven. Um, I love these buttons. First off, I want to just comment and say that this is a fantastic addition, the ability to filter out the different types. But I take it one step further. When I'm here and I'm looking at the different types of airplanes, I've got a lot of different airplanes, right? And let's say that I want to create a new airplane. There needs to be a button on here, on this thing, not just to show outdated equipment, but to filter by type. So I need this to extend down a little bit. And then I want to be able to say, like, show fighters, show interwar, um, you know, fighters, naval bombers, strategic bombers, um, close air support, and whatever. Like, all six different airplane types. Because if you're like me, you create variants, right? I've got the, uh, I've got, just look at the fighters, for example. I've got the, the Fighter 2, the FW-190, and then I've got the FW-190B. I used to have the FW-190A, but I deleted it to try to minimize this list. This list gets too long. Um, I just want to see fighters. 
especially as someone who is not a huge history buff, I don't know what the hell the FW-190 was. Apparently it was a fighter in the World War II era of time. Okay, some of you are going to be really upset with me for not knowing more about the FW-190. Okay, big freaking deal. It's a fighter. I care about the fact that it's a fighter. So when I'm trying to build fighters, I only want to see fighters in this list of airplanes. So I need a filter to show only my different fighters. And whether they're outdated or not, that, that that's fine. Show outdated equipment, show only fighters. I don't really understand what this whole oil filter, steel filter stuff is supposed to help us out with. Um, it kind of doesn't really do anything really because they all cost the exact same stuff. It's all aluminum, rubber, and like, I don't, I don't get this. I feel like these buttons could be replaced with exactly what I'm talking about. Fighters, closer support, whatever. Filter by that. That's what's more important. So that would be uh, an adjustment I'd love to see. Adjustment number eight. So I, um, okay. Let's say that you're in here, uh, you are in here, and you are creating a variant, right? So you go here, and I'm not showing outdated equipment, I want to upgrade, I've got 500 air experience, I want to upgrade my FW-190B fighter, so I create variant, and let's say I want to give it some more range. Why am I only seeing the changes to the airplane? I want to see all of the stats. On this screen in particular, I want to know its agility, I want to know its, like, like, I can't even see its range, unless I adjust its range. Like, why is this information not shown all the time? I get that you don't want to have information overload, but at least on the Create Variant screen, I should be able to see all airplane stats. Now, one thing that I have found, um, this is a tip from Daniel during our World War II, uh, the three-day war stream that we were doing, um, is that if you, if you click on an airbase, and then you click on this, you can view all of the details of an airplane, which is really useful. Um, but, but I want to see all of this information on the create variant design. Like, I, I don't understand why it's not visible there. Um, what I also used to do before is I'd go to the technology screen, go to the airplane, find it, and then you could see its base stats here. But, like, I shouldn't have to go to the research screen to find this information. It should be visible when I'm making the adjustments, and, uh, and that would just be an adjustment that I would make. Adjustment number nine is related to a minor complaint that I have with uh, navies. Um, and this comes from, you know, I've picked up a few things from Stellaris, right? Like, when you have multiple, um, multiple navies, as they actually are called in, in Stellaris, selected, you can click the G key and they'll combine, and whichever one you had selected first is like the prior, like the, the high priority one, and they will all merge to that unit. For some reason in this game, navies have to be in the exact same location to be able to merge, which is stupid. I should be able to say, I've got all these different navies selected, G, I press the G key, merge, merge, go to wherever they are and merge. Like, why can't I do that? I don't understand why I can't do that. I, I do not like the, the micro of having to like say, okay, all right, everybody go to the Bay of Yus uh, here. Hold commands, everyone go to the Bay of Biscay, I'm gonna have to wait X number of days or months before they arrive. Once they've all arrived, then I can tell them, okay, now I want you to merge. No, come on, I'm, I'm leading freaking World War II here, right? I should be able to say, German Reich Flota 1, meet up with German Reich Flota 2 and, and merge. Like, issue issue the command, send it over the interway, the, the radio. You guys, go merge in the Bay of Biscay, go, now. I don't have I, I don't want to have to micro that. It should just be simpler than that. I should just say, you guys are all one navy now, and you all are going to the Bay of Biscay. And then beyond that, what are you talking about? I can't appoint a commander when they're at sea. Naval commander can only be changed in ports. Excuse me? What? Okay, let's take a look at this. I've got Eric von Manstein over in India, and yet suddenly I can go over here and say no, 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 Eric von Manstein. Let's find him, Eric von Manstein. Wherever the hell you are. There's so many of them. He's already appointed Eric von Manstein. No, no, no. Now, you're over here. I can instantaneously teleport my generals, but I can't appoint a commander when they're at sea? Come on, that's idiotic. Let us appoint, let us appoint naval commanders at sea. 
why can't we, I, that doesn't make any sense um it just doesn't make sense so that should get changed and that's uh that's an adjustment that i would like to see adjustment number 10 is in this division designer template um first off there's been a lot of requests i think that people have made for the ability to create your own custom templates from scratch um i don't know how that would work out with the whole army experience system i i understand the the concept behind you're supposed to um fight to learn how to fight so that you can make adjustments to your army and that's cool but i also feel like it'd be nice if maybe um there was an option an optional setting you could use at the start where um, you start off with no divisions and it, re it returns the army experience back to you for the divisions that you would have had had you had them and then it allows you to use that experience to create your own custom templates as for example um, some of the initial templates are too big or too wide or too whatever but anyway that's actually not related to the adjustment the adjustment that I would like to see is that this thing again I would like this thing expand this thing out make it a little bit bigger give us more room give us more information what we have right now is that if i were to add infantry to this this brigade we get this i get these little green triangles and these little red triangles red is apparently bad green is apparently good how much good how much bad don't know no freaking clue it's just it's just gooder it's just more good than it used to be that's not good enough for me. I want to know exactly how much HP I gained, exactly how much soft attack, exactly how much hard attack, and I don't want to have to do it by doing this. I don't want to have to do, okay, soft attack 177.8, if I add one, one infantry, okay, I go up to 191.6, so that was like, what, what was that, like 20 points? I think that was like 20 points. Okay, we remove it again, 177, oh, okay, it was only like 15 points. Oh wait, that was the wrong one. Oh crap, I gotta, blah, blah, blah. blah. Also, why can't I just right-click on this to make it go away? I want to right-click. Right-click to remove division. But, like, I want to know... I want to know more than just the green arrow. The green arrow, I want to know all of the information all the time. That is what's important to me. Um, and this is, this is okay. It's decent. But it could be so much better. Um, so, that would be an adjustment that I'd like to see. Adjustment number 11, um, and now we're getting into the really good stuff here. This is one of my favorites. This is the, the, I think, hopefully the easiest for Paradox to implement, and I think one of the biggest quality of life changes that they could make. Right now, when you go to the O key, and you're looking at your army list, um, let's say that you sort by army to try to find divisions that are not assigned, right? So what you do is you hold down the shift key, click, excuse me, hold down the shift key, click, 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 and then it automatically selects those once you release the shift key and then you can right click and add them to a division. How about we do this? How about while holding the shift key, shift key I can click and drag and select all of those divisions. While, while holding the shift key and dragging it selects everything. And you should be able to pan this screen. Um, I'm using the middle mouse scroll wheel right now to do so. But you should be able to pan and drag and just select multiple of them at the same time. That would be amazing. Um, for for organizing your armies, this whole shift click 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 thing is is not good enough in my opinion. Um, so that would be an adjustment that I'd love to see. Adjustment number twelve is um, related to my boot camp philosophy, where I send troops back to boot camp to get them trained up. Why can't we sort by experience? Or more importantly, why aren't our most experienced units at the top of the list by default? How is this list organized? Why are these guys down here and these guys up here? Why is the motorized infantry type 2 here and this panzer or this light tank type 4 down here? What is the organization scheme for this? And why is there organization? There's no buttons to, to allow for it. And why does this damn button not work? Like, to me, when, when, I, when I look at this button, I feel like... If this is on, that means that my troops are allowed to use strategic redeployment. If it's off, they're not. Um, what it does is, like, if I press the B key, I can I can strategically redeploy and, and I can force them to strategically re redeploy. But what I'm talking about is, like, I kind of expected that if it was off, my armies would never strategically redeploy. Meaning they would never give up 90% of their organization. But no, no, no. 
I constantly have troops on the front line of battlefields who are strategically re redeploying just because they feel like it, and the army, like the AI, has decided that they need to move, and so then they redeploy. But anyway, this, let me get back to my point. I want my armies organized by experience. I want to be able to click, organized by type, organized by experience, like whatever. Like I want, I want to be able to organize by strength, organized by organization, or whatever. But the most important one for me is organized by experience. And if, and if this, um, the previous adjustment actually gets applied, this would be incredibly useful because then, what I could do is I could hold down the shift key, select, select, select. And then I could just automatically select these guys, the guys who are low on experience, and I'd be able to find them because they'd be at the bottom of the list because they're the idiots, you know, they're the brand new derps that don't know how to use guns. And I could automatically just send them to boot camp. So organize armies by experience. Highest experience should be at the top, shouldn't it? They're the badasses, they're the cool guys. They should be at the top. Anyway, that'd be my adjustment. Adjustment 13. Unlucky number 13. Alright, this is a minor complaint. Um, there's this thing in the game where in order for you to be able to relocate armies, you have to have them in a port. Um, in EU4, they implemented a rather crappily implemented, I would say, um, but yet functional um, autom autonomous fleet transportation system, where you can select an army and say, go here, and if there are available transports, it will it will send them to that location using available transports. Um, I feel like we need something similar to that in, in this game. If I've got a division, let's say I create an army, and I've got some guy here, right? And I want to take this army, and I want it to go to London. Cannot transport to a non-naval base location. Okay. Um, I click here, it works. But it only works for the ones that were in the port. These other ones are just like, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. It's impossible. Sir, it's impossible. We don't know. There's, we have no idea what you mean. What do you mean you want us to go to the nearest port and then go there? That's far too complicated. So I have to do something like this where I like hold the B key, rebase, wait, get them all to go to the port. Now I can click on the port and now they'll all go over there. That's stupid, quite frankly. I should be able to just take an army, have an army, we've got this thing here, and if I have access to a port, they just should just automatically go to the nearest port, and even if I click off of the port, if I click here, it should, it should automatically go to the port, and then take them to the nearest port, and then they should from there march to there. Why is it more complicated than that? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. We're talking about 1946. If we have this system in place in the year 1400 in EU4, why can't I have the system in place in 1946? So, anyway, that, that would be an adjustment, and it, and again, it's you know, lucky number 13. Um, now, I had more than that, I actually have 19 in my list, but some of them kind of got consolidated in because they're somewhat similar and related. So yeah, we're going to stop on unlucky number 13, and that's going to be uh, the wrap-up of my adjustments, um, version number 1 at least, for Hearts Fire and 4. Hopefully some of these changes can get implemented. Hopefully Paradox takes it with a grain of salt and understands that I only want to make their games um, a little bit more user approachable and you know better if I can. Um, and it's just, hey, it's just one guy's opinion on the internet, so take it for what it's worth. Now that all being said, before any of you guys in, in the comments section jump in saying, oh, Roomba, you should stop trying to be a backseat gamer. Um, keep in mind, Podcat, the Hearts of Iron 4 lead developer, literally asked me on Twitter when are you going to do your adjustments video for Hearts of Iron 4? So, they're asking me for feedback. So, I don't want to hear any negative comments. So, there. Anyway, I look forward to seeing your responses, look forward to seeing your thoughts, and as always, if you think that there are things that could be changed in the game that could make the game better, please do leave comments in the video down below, in the comments section, and I will probably end up putting those into the next adjustments video, and hopefully try to get things changed. So, um, my goal here is to shed light on great changes that can be made. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in the next episode. See you soon.